Hello and welcome to this Business Central video on the direct cost applied and purchases account. I'm Gavin, I'm a Business Central consultant from Manchester in the north of England and I just wanted to share my thoughts on the direct cost applied and purchases accounts because it's always something that provokes conversations when first when new Business Central users use the system. We go ahead and we set up the the system with all the posting accounts and all the various posting groups. We go into general posting setup and we start putting the accounts in and then there's direct cost applied sat there. And that's when the questions start, when we start saying, right, okay, this is a cost of goods sold account. And yeah, that's when, that's when all the questions start. So if we just start off by thinking what, when is it used in Business Central? So it's used as part of a of the purchasing of inventory. Um, so whenever you do a purchase invoice in Business Central, this direct cost applied and the purchases account are both going to be used. Now, ordinarily, when you do a purchase invoice for some inventory, you expect a minimum of like a debit to inventory to increase our inventory and then a credit to our accounts payable which is great, but in Business Central, it also has the two other accounts of direct cost supply and purchases. So if we just have a look at that in action, first of all, in Business Central, so here I am in Business Central, I've got a purchase invoice for furniture industries, for a chair, for £97.50, and if I preview post that, we can see here we've got five, distribution you're thinking that's quite a lot so let's go into and have a nosy so we can see here at the top we've got a debit to our inventory fantastic we've got a credit to our accounts payable and then we've got this debit for that as well so this add this equals this and in most other business applications that i've come across that would be absolutely fine and we post this and everything would be hunky-dory However, in Business Central, we have these two extra entries. We've got credit here to this direct cost applied, and we have a debit to this purchases code. So why are they there? I mean, the first question is, I mean, this, like I say, this would work with just these three. So why are these there? Now, straight away on this page is a clue as to what's going on in Business Central. And the source code column is the one that's giving the clue. Now, if you can't see the source code column, you may have to personalize, so click cog, go personalize, and just drag that column on. And you can see that there's one transaction, but two lots of entries going on. We've got an inventory portion, the top two, and then we've got a purchases portion, the bottom two. The debit for the inventory is being offset by a credit to this direct cost applied here, making this side balance. And then we've got a debit here to purchases, which is offsetting these two here. So two lots of entries for one transaction. So that's great, but why? Still, still the question remains. So now that makes a little bit more sense. We can see it's splitting off, but, but why bother? So the answer actually lies in the inventory setup window. And in here, we've got this option called automatic cost posting. So what does that mean? That means whenever I post any kind of inventory related transaction in Business Central, I want the GL to be automatically updated. So whether that's this purchase invoice, uh, a sales invoice, a sales credit, a inventory journal, whatever's gonna hit the inventory code, I want it to happen automatically. So I can actually toggle that off. So what does that mean? That means that I no longer want it to happen automatically. So whenever I post a purchase invoice, a sales invoice, and all the rest of them, I don't want any inventory postings. What'll actually happen is they'll go into a file separately. So now this introduces an issue because if I was to post a purchase invoice with no debit to the inventory, I've just got a credit to my accounts payable. So how is that gonna balance? So if we toggle this off and go back and preview again, we've now only got three entries 
And this source code is again giving us the clue. It's dropped off the inventory because I've toggled that off. I said I no one longer want this to automatically update. So now I'm left with the purchases. And this is where without the purchase side, this wouldn't balance. I'd have just this debit here and just this credit here. So Business Central introduces this purchases account. And likewise, the debit entry has gone into the file waiting to be transferred across via another routine, which I'll show you in a second. The debit of the inventory has gone in, so it needs a balance of inventory. So the credit, the direct cost supplied has gone in there to make that balance. So the actual routine that you would run without this option switched on is post inventory cost to GL. Like that, you'd run this and tend to run it per entry like that. And then that, if I was to post an invoice, only this would go across. And then at a later date, I can run that to bring across the inventory portion. So that kind of shows why the direct cost supplied and the purchase account are actually supporting this piece of functionality called the automatic cost posting in the inventory setup. So if I go in, toggle that back on, so now I'm saying I want it to happen automatically. And if I now preview, I'm back to my five and I'm back to my two entries. The, the inventory is being offset by direct cost applied and the purchases side are being offset by the purchases. These two net each other off. So that is why it exists. So now you think, well, why not just have that not available, that option? But the option is great because it means that if I was posting hundreds of purchase invoices or hundreds of sales invoices, I can switch the automatic cost posting off. And I've just halved the amount of work Business Central has to do. It only has to do this. It puts the rest in the file. It just inserts those into a table, saving them for later. At the end of the day, you could run that on a job queue in the end of the night, and then it's running when nobody else is in Business Central. So you're speeding the system up. So, and the other reason is you may just not want it to ever post costs. You might want to do your cost of goods sold manually. So in that case, you'd have your beginning inventory, and you could have your accumulating purchases here, because this would always get posted. Then you'd less your ending inventory and you'd have your cost of goods sold. So you're getting this flexibility. So just to finish everything off, what we'll do is we'll post this invoice. And then we'll go into the GL register, which happens to be one of my favorite pages, Business Central. And as you can see here, these top two are my purchase invoice. So when I posted one purchase invoice, I actually got two registers. One was for the inventory posting, and the other was for the purchases side. This posting here may not have needed to happen if I'd have switched that option off. If we look at the purchases and go to the general ledger, these are the three entries that happened. You can see my debit to my purchases making this balance, making this functionality be able to work. On the inventory side, if I go to general ledger, you can see here, there's my credit and there's my debit. And my, uh, that's my inventory and that's my direct cost supplied. So it's just a, a piece of um, neat functionality that enables you to like um, disconnect and that have the, the inventory being automatically updated. So that kind of concludes. There is a few more of the bits where it ties in with things like value entries, which uh, I won't go into. That's kind of the, the crux of, of what's happening there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. I hope it's kind of demystified, direct cost applied a little bit if you've managed to make it to the end. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.